Our first speaker of Act Two has a PhD in political science that focused on voter behavior and is a senior research associate at the University of Calgary. He teaches, he likes graphs and old newspapers, and he tweets too much. Please welcome Paul Ferry. Hello. I feel compelled to tell you that this button is connected to nothing and everything is a lie. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about the night I fell in love. It was um, 1993, a delicate time in a boy's life, grade six, and it was the federal election, and I saw the results and I still not recovered. It's, <laughs> democracy is amazing. So let's talk about some exotic places now. Here we are in Saskatoon. And I want to talk to you about the 1988 municipal referendum. They voted on two issues. One was to ban nuclear weapons within the city boundaries of Saskatoon. <laughs> the other was about Sunday shopping hours. I'm going to talk about that one, more exciting. So question number one, are you in favor of all stores being allowed to be open on Sunday? People voted no. No big deal. It's fine, you can vote however you want. Well, yeah, I don't know. But, Question two, are you in favor of grocery stores being open on a Sunday? People voted yes, so that, that makes sense. Nothing confusing so far. Now question three, are you in favor of only drug stores and confectionery stores being open on Sunday? So people voted yes to only drug stores and confectionery stores being open on Sunday, and also grocery stores being open on Sunday, but nothing else. Are you in favor of city council regulating store hours to close all stores between 1 a.m. And 5 a.m., people voted yes. Again, no big deal. And are you in favor of all stores being allowed to set their own hours? For one, on Monday to Sunday, people also voted yes. So it was really confusing. So the first point I want to make is that it really matters the questions that you ask if you're going to be counted. And now, city council's reaction uh, was really quite great. It was this. Council still confused <laughs> over store hours issue. So, I mean, really important if you're going to be counted, uh, to know what you're going to be counted to do. Now, let's cast our minds back to a, a more recent October. I didn't fall in love again. It was more stressful politics. I'm, is dead to me. Um, 2019, <laughs> federal election. We counted the, the, the votes, and the Liberals got 6 million votes, 33%. The Conservatives got 6.2 million votes, 34%. But then we counted the seats. So the Liberals won 157 seats and the Conservatives only won 121 seats. So is that unusual? No, not really. Here are some times that it's happened. It's supposed to be like exciting and dynamic, it's the best I can do. But <laughs> it's happened much more often than this. Last time it happened was 1979 when Joe Clark beat uh, um, Pierre Trudeau but lost the popular vote. Now why did that happen? It's because of this graph on the left. The Conservatives did a little bit better in places where they lost in 2015, but on the right, the Conservatives did a lot better in places that they already won in 2015. And the way that we count our ballots is that if you do better in places that you've already won, it doesn't actually really count for anything. Here's another example of how this happens. On the left, we have some dots. They're voters, the orange party, the blue party. Read into it however you want. I drew some circles around those party, those voters. And on the left, the orange party wins three seats. The blues won. And on the right, same voters, same place. Now the blues win. So again, if you're going to count, it really matters who you're counted with. And why does that happen? It's because of this cartoon from 1812. It's from Massachusetts. Now, Elbridge Jerry, we all know him. He's the governor of Massachusetts. <laughs> He drew some electoral boundaries to look like a salamander. That's where we get the word gerrymander from. Literally true, I know. Another important fact about counting, Fenno's paradox. So what's Fenno's paradox? So that is the idea that people hate Congress, but they love their own congressmen. It's the same as with schools. You ask people, do you like education? And they say yes, but then they hate, but they actually like their own Schools. Now, here's another fact you need to know. If every voter prefers A over B, then the group prefers A over B. Sounds reasonable. If every voter's preference between A and B stays the same, then the group's preference stays the same. Three, no single voter possesses the power to always determine the group's preference. 
it sounds like three important things that you want to get right in an electoral system, but the mind-blowing thing is, and this is mind-blowing because political science, we don't know too much, we've actually proven that it's impossible to satisfy all three criteria at the same time. Kenneth Arrow won a Nobel Prize for this. So you can't even have a perfect electoral system. Now, I want you to say hi to the Doge of Venice. Hi, hi. So he was an important figure. And in 1260, they thought, we can't just have any, any random person being the Doge. So they came up with an electoral system to elect the Doge. And here are the rules. One, 39 members of the Great Council are reduced to nine by random draw. Then the nine vote for 40 people. And the 40 people are reduced by random draw to 12. And the 12 choose 25 people who are reduced to a random draw to nine, who then elect 45 people who are reduced by lot to 11, who then choose 41 people to elect the Doge. And why is that important? <laughs> it's because in computer science, they're super interested in electoral systems. Why is that? Sometimes you have to like match up which computer, sorry, super dry mouth, but uh, which computer you want to believe. And actually, the, the, the Doge electoral system is a really good way of deciding which computer to believe. So I want to leave you with three things. One, the rules for counting are really important. If you don't get them right, you don't get anything right, including democracy, which is relatively important if you don't want to be killed by the government, you know. Two, no set of rules are perfect. We know this. And three, figuring out what voters mean is actually quite difficult. What did the voters in Saskatoon actually mean when they voted for and against a confusing array of things. So don't overinterpret election results. So <laughs> I'll leave you with this thought. Democracy is great, but it really, really matters how you count, who you count, and what you count. And with that, I will bid you adieu.